What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the Porsche Network. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 tools that every Porsche owner should buy. And we're starting right now. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the Porsche Network. My name is Satch, and if you want to see more Porsche hints, tips, reviews, and guides, then please consider clicking that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. I post new Porsche videos every single Thursday, and it'd be great to have you around as a subscriber. Now over the years as a Porsche owner, I've owned about five or six Porsche cars. I've got lots of friends with Porsche cars, so together we put our heads together, we figure problems out, and uh, you know we have to use a lot of tools along the way to get the job done. So in this video, as I say, I'm gonna show you 10 tools that pretty much any Porsche owner can uh, use and utilize, basically. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Cayman. I've got a Cayman, a 911, and a Boxster, and the tools I'm gonna talk about will be perfect for those cars, but don't discount these tools if you've got a Cayenne, Macan, Panamera, etc. Forgot to say that if you think I've missed anything, please put a comment in the box below and let me know which tool I've missed. Okay, so tool number one, is, well, actually, let me get it out. This is what they call a low jack. Why is it a low jack? Well. Let me get the other jack out. Okay, so the difference between these two jacks is that the red one is obviously the low jack, the blue one is just a standard trolley jack. The low jack is able to get under the low sports cars. The normal jacks just simply won't get under. Allow me to show you. The low jack will slide right underneath onto the trolley point and allow us to jack up the vehicle. Symbol. Now a two-turn low jack is pretty cheap. You probably pay about 25 to 30 pounds for a good quality one. A really good investment if you plan to work on your own Porsche 911 Boxster or Cayman. Next up, number two on the list is what I think every single Porsche owner should have if they're not using the car every day. It's probably going to be different if, again, say you've got a Cayenne, a Panamera, or a Macan where you probably use that as a daily driver. These cars are generally limited to weekend use unless you're lucky enough to use one on a daily basis. Good for you if you are. But this is what we call a C-Tech charger. And this is pretty much one of the best quality chargers on the market right now. It's pretty much exactly the same as a Porsche charger, only rebranded as C-Tech. So this is what you want to do. You want to keep your Porsche plugged into the mains, plug this into the battery, plug it into the mains to keep the battery in great condition and make sure it's always got a good charge. So the last thing you want to do is keep driving it and then not drive it for three or four weeks but don't have it on charge because ultimately it's going to destroy the battery and possibly the alternator. Okay, so now we're looking at number three on the list. This is a book which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, you can get them for a different vehicle. So for example, this is 101 projects for your Porsche 911. Now this is for the 996 and the 997 cars. Uh, costs about 20 to 25 pounds, uh, but you can get them for the Boxsters, the Caymans and everything else. There's a guy coming in here don't know what he's doing. Looks pretty lost. Should have helped him out really, but there we go. Um, yeah, so the, the 101 Projects book is a fantastic addition to anybody who likes to work on their own cars. You know, if you like to change things like water pumps or alternators, batteries, uh, replace the bumpers, strip lights out, do anything you need to do in these cars. It's kind of similar to the Haynes manual if, you ever, if you're familiar with the Haynes manuals. Um, but you can get them for all cars. There's a quick look at it. What does it say? It says modifications to increase horsepower, not sure about that, improvements and tuning for suspension and braking for sharper handling, maintenance tips and tricks. This is number three on the list, a fantastic little book and it will get you out of sticky situations and give you basically the knowledge on how to do a particular job on your Porsche. Okay, so number four on the list is something which goes hand in hand with the how-to guides, and it is a diagnostic tool for your Porsche. There are two diagnostic tools which I would recommend, the of POR version 1.0, the of POR version 2.0. The 2.0 covers more systems. Ultimately, both tools cover engines, ABS, airbags, transmission, convertible top, service reset, battery voltage. They'll give you all of that information as well as live data, 
the version 2.0 covers additional systems which is generally seen on the cars from 2012 onwards. So you're looking at the stop start feature with the new battery registration, uh, you'd be looking at the DPF feature on some of the vehicles, you'd be looking at the electronic parking brake, uh, throttle reset and maybe a few more that I'm missing out but ultimately they'll give you live data. Uh, if you, as I say if you've got a 2012 or newer vehicle go for the 2.0, if you've got something like a 987 like I have here the 1.0 will be just fine. I'll put the links to these kits in the description below this video. We're flying through these videos just remember to subscribe if you want to see more from the Porsche network. Okay so next up we're going to be looking at some tools which are absolutely essential if you want to work on your own Porsche cars. Yes there are thousands and thousands of tools available on the market but what I'm looking at here is just the absolute essentials the bare minimum if you wanted to get by on a particular job these tools will see you right. Now first up is a good socket set and a good quality socket set with a few extenders as well. Now when it comes to a socket set I use a half inch, I use about three or four of these different extender bars as well to get into uh, sort of longer places which are pretty difficult to get to and I've also got a few of these reducers which will reduce the uh, socket down to a smaller size if you need to. That's what I use, I find it's got really good quality. Okay so the next tool I recommend are these Torx bits. These are absolutely essential if you want to start taking apart uh, sort of panel trims, interior panels, you know like the door cards or the pillars on the inside. If you want to maybe look for rattles and vibrations you'll need these at every stage to actually take off the panels and find the actual uh, rattle or vibration. For the exact same purpose, Allen keys and when all else fails spanners. But of course there are a lot more tools as I say available on the market and I do have a lot more tools than this it's just these are just the essentials which I think will get you by uh, and maybe see you through a smaller type of job. Alright next up I don't even know where we are on the list I forgot which number but next on the list kind of goes hand in hand with some of the tools I was talking about before. You know how I was saying if you need to maybe uh, get off some of the the panels of the car or the door card um, or maybe some of the uh, the exterior trim or some of the new parts that I put on the car. Well, when you're taking the old parts off, you will undoubtedly come across a lot of these which always tend to snap. So a box of replacement assorted kind of uh, clips or I don't know what they're called, they're called um, interior trim clips or something like that. Anyway, you can get a box of these, an assorted box of these for about 15 pounds on Amazon. So I would definitely recommend if you are, you know, if you are curious about your car and you're taking parts apart uh, to look for rattles or you, you know, maybe you're, you're putting some new splitters on or some part of the car you're replacing, you'll always need these little clips here uh, and they come in handy. I've used a lot of these clips and I've still got hundreds of them left. So as I say, about 15 pounds, a fantastic value, little tip. Oh, and it also comes with these little sort of tools to get the old rivets out. Really handy, really good. Next up is a tool which will allow you to remove O2 sensors from your car. It is a really basic tool. It almost looks like a socket, socket with a quarter of the socket actually removed from it. How does this work? Well, this here, this end here is a 22 mil socket and it goes over the O2 sensor, but obviously the O2 sensor has a cable coming out of it as well. So that's where you slot the cable in there. You put that over it, put your socket kit in, and then you start to unscrew the O2 sensor. It's a great little tool, very cheap, about £10. Recommended getting one if you're working on your own car. Next up, you'll need this if you're doing your own services. Looks like a, a weird sort of strange contraption. Uh, what it is, is an oil service removal tool. So what you do is you get your socket set, plug it in and then what you do is you put this over your oil filter and as you're turning it, it gradually gets a grip. You can see it's got these sort of gripped ends here. This will grip onto the oil filter and then you'll, it'll allow you to unscrew it in a very, very effective way. These are about £10 and yeah, if you're doing your own services, you need one of these little bastards. It'll help you out. 
So next up is not actually even a tool, but it's still something that I've got. To, I've just got to put on the list because you know it's something that you do need. It's detailing products. Detailing products on these cars are absolutely essential. Why are they essential? Well, for the for the, the sole purpose of not destroying the paintwork on your cars. Last thing I want to see is these cars going through car washes or being given to uh, you know bad reputation car washers who use big brushes that have been used on a thousand of the cars before it and they've been used on the underbodies of the cars then it's going direct onto your paintwork. The only way to do it is to get a professional to do it or learn how to do it yourself with specific detailing tools. I've got this ceramic hybrid wax which works absolutely fantastic from Meguiar's, Wonder Wheels which works wonders on the wheels actually um, and a few other products which I haven't got with me right now um, but please just invest a bit, a bit of your own time, a bit of your own money because ultimately the paintwork and the bodywork is the first thing that anybody sees when they uh, when they look at your Porsche so it's really really worth investing and you can pick up these for you know this year costs about seven pounds this year costs about 15 pounds once you've got a bit of shampoo a bit of um, a bit of wax then you know you might be looking at about 30 to 40 pounds but it's going to see you through probably the whole summer and i'm not here to tell anybody how to wash their car or what they should be doing with the bodywork or the paintwork of their car it's entirely up to you it's just my recommendation based on my experience and what i've seen in the past okay and last but certainly not least possibly actually most important it is number 10 on the list it is well it's a wallet full of money um i'm not sure how much i've got but you need more than this 120 pounds you need more than that but every time you need to maybe do a service on your car every time every time you need to take it to a garage or a workshop and get a smallish job done you're going to be walking away with a bill of three to four hundred pounds so you need to budget accordingly. You always need to set money aside. It's great if you've got loads of money, then you don't need to budget. But if you're like most people who own these cars, you know, you're not earning millions of pounds. If you were, you wouldn't be driving a car like this. But budget three to 400 pounds every time a job goes in. Now, the things I've told you about today, they're not incredibly expensive. In fact, some of these are very cheap. If we were to top, top the total amount of everything I've showed you today, you'd see the amount right there. <laughs> Guys, I hope you found this video helpful today. This is the Porsche Network. If you wanna be part of the Porsche Network, all you need to do is click that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. I post new Porsche videos every single Thursday and it'd be great to have you around as a subscriber. I'm gonna go and kick that guy in the head for keep beeping his horn. I'll see you on Thursday for the next video. It's not graffiti, it, it comes off, it's, it's washable chalk.